Chapter 26. Stephen and his mother eventually gave up trying to find the mysterious baby opossum. Samar watched them from her living room window, but she didn't venture out. After about an hour, hairy spiders and flashlight woke up and returned on wobbly legs to their den. And that was that. Again. Don't worry, I told Bongo. Third time's a charm. What's that supposed to mean? It's just something people say. Charm, Bongo sneered. Did you know that's what people call a bunch of hummingbirds? No, actually. Hummingbirds, which, let's face it, are pretty much like overdressed flies. But a bunch of us crows together. Guess what we get to be called? What? A murder. A murder of crows. Can you believe it? A bunch of trees. You're a grove. A bunch of raccoons. A gaze. Bongo flapped her wings. But crows were a murder. Are you quite finished? I asked. Sorry, I'm worried about you. And I get grumpy when I'm worried. Bongo plucked out a piece of new grass and tossed it aside. I have one more plan to get Samara and Stephen talking, I said. How about a plan to get you not turned into a picnic table? I can't control everything in life, Bongo, I said gently. And if I could, what fun would that be? But this little thing, this wish of Samar's, I can make it happen, I hesitated. At least I think I can. I don't understand why this matters so much to you. She reminds me of a little girl I knew a long time ago. You're a Badinsky, said Bongo warily, but I love you anyway. She looked up at me with something like a crow version of a smile. Beak open, head cocked, eyes gleaming. So what's plan number three?